Hello and welcome. It is time for a HOTS patch note review. Uh, this came pretty much out of left field, pretty out of pocket. Today, the day is 17 November, and uh, just yesterday we got a 16 November Heroes of the Storm patch note. Now, why is this so surprising? Over a year ago, Blizzard announced that they ceased active development for Heroes of the Storm, but that they will be treating it the same way that they're treating other veteran games in the Blizzard repertoire, like StarCraft 1 and 2, in that they keep the servers up, they keep it running, they fix a couple of bugs, and balance patches as needed. But it's been like one and a half years since the last balance patch. I went through my Twitch commands, and the last one that I could find was Heroes of the Storm balance patch notes March 29th. So that's about one and a half years ago, more in fact. And we had changes to the following heroes. Since then, I have found the following patches. I found a July 12th patch note that was three months after that one, three to four months, where very excitingly, and in my, truth be told, I did not do a YouTube video on this. That's why I'm talking about it now. The hero rotation is going to update on different days of the month. The epic chaos lizard mount has been added as a login reward and the spectral butcher skin is now available for purchase. These ground shaking changes, I did not cover it. I didn't write an opinion piece on it. I didn't do a big YouTube react video editorial on it because I just felt like the ramifications of discussing these things would be too great to bear for the world. After that, we had the Heroes of the Storm patch note September 20th, more recently. This is where my proverbial eyebrow started metaphorically raising on my metaphorical forehead. Bug fixes to heroes. Now this came kind of out of nowhere and there's a lot of questions here about what could this mean for the future of Hearts of the Storm. Blizzard of course has since been successfully taken over, adapted by Microsoft and policy changes might be associated with that either before the acquisition was official in anticipation of the acquisition or rapidly being uh, inducted after Microsoft's takeover of Blizzard. So what can we look at? What can we say is, uh, is maybe going on here? Well, there's a couple of theories floating out there. Uh, recently, Diablo 4 went to Steam, Overwatch 2 went to Steam, and these are combo breakers of the tradition of Blizzard of keeping everything on their own Battle.net platform. Uh, the Battle.net launcher was of course the proprietary launcher for all games Blizzard and it looks a little something like this. You've got all your Blizzard games here. And the first weird thing that happened was that they started offering non-Blizzard games, Activision games. Like um, I think you can find Call of Duty on here and stuff. I think I actually deleted them because I don't want to see them in my Blizzard launcher. Uh, but for them to go to other platforms was quite a surprise. We also see uh, GOG platform, the good old games platform, selling Warcraft Battle.net Edition as the official reseller of this game. This happened some time ago, probably about, I don't know, three, four years ago, and was also a combo breaker to what had previously been the sheer tradition of keeping everything in the house. So as of five plus years ago, Blizzard has started thinking about putting their games on other platforms to reach more audiences. And this is also relevant because part of the reason that the Microsoft $69 billion takeover of Blizzard was delayed was because of FTC regulation concerns all across the world in different countries and in America and in UK, right? And the concern was anti-competitiveness. So when one big player, Microsoft, takes over another big player, the concern is, what if Microsoft does consumer unfriendly changes where they make all these Blizzard titles, they make them only available on Xbox 360. Now, I haven't really kept up with the console development. I'm pretty sure Xbox 360 is an older model. Uh, whatever it's called now, Xbox 10, whatever. This was part of the concern of allowing this takeover to happen. So in, make, in enabling the takeover, Microsoft and Blizzard had to prove that they would not do anti-consumer uh, and you know exclusivity policies where some of their games would only be available as exclusives on a single platform shutting out competitors like PlayStation or PC etc 
So the Overwatch 2 and the Diablo 4 make a lot of sense to be on Steam as part of proving that games are now going to be available on all kinds of different platforms. And no doubt the shareholders for Blizzard Activision are happy when more people can spend you know, money on acquiring these products of Blizzard, Overwatch and Diablo 4 that also have in-app purchases, in-store purchases. I'm making it sound like they're mobile games. They're not yet, anyway. Uh, might be Diablo 4 coming to uh, mobile. Uh, but anyway, that's just uh, a theory, right? So uh, maybe Heroes of the Storm is also going to Steam. And if Heroes of the Storm is going to Steam, maybe this is part of a preparation patch that makes it a little bit more ready for a bigger public. Now, where did all these bug fixes come from? Where did they get the list, right? Our active player base still continually submitting feedback for bugs in current day. The, the gap between this July patch and the September patch is more than a year and the July patch was nothing much at all. We would not be blamed for thinking nothing else was going to ever happen again. So I personally have not been submitting bug reports. But the way that things work in development teams, generally, uh, when active development was still happening, there's going to be a really big bug list in the development team. Uh, that could be hundreds or even thousands of known bugs on a priority list that they will work through day by day as they're allowed to work on it, as they have time permitted, budget permitted, staff permitted. They will go through the bugs, the, the worst ones first, game breaking ones, then lesser ones, then lesser ones, then lesser ones. But at some point, active development stopped. So my guess is that the, this, this bug list was stored somewhere at Blizzard and therefore good information was available as we're going to be looking at today's patch of november 16th with maybe a small look at the october 23 patch from this year as well we're going to be seeing changes to heroes that remove some quality of life issues that they had we're going to see bug fixes no balance patch notes as of yet though maybe that is still going to be coming there's also the very interesting hero difficulty reclassification uh, that happened recently, which um, actually I don't see the patch notes of just yet. There, there was a hero difficulty reclassification that I think you can find on the Heroes of the Storm subreddit. And that is also an interesting thing to do for the active Blizzard player base. Like, is there a, uh, a, a reason for that? So we're going to be looking at that as well. It is in there. Let's see. Uh, very hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they expanded upon it. And because uh, I think somewhere there was a list where it just showed all the classification difficulties. So, yeah, there we go. We're going to see difficulty classification updates. And I find that to be a peculiar uh, change to do for a game that has mostly been neglected for the last year plus. So I really feel like this points towards more attention coming to the game soon this is relevant especially through the purview through the lens of new audiences coming in and what better than to have a new audience through putting hearts on steam now after bringing in let's say that this is true this hypothetical and people are going to be coming in to heroes of the storm through steam you now have a bigger audience the next logical step is to reopen for payment changes now, of course, the current shop is still working. Buying heroes uh, is still required outside of the free-to-play rotation. You can earn and grind dozens of heroes, but unless you play for thousands of hours, you won't unlock all the heroes that are normally for payment in Hearts of the Storm, in Heroes of the Storm, just quite yet. So there is a, uh, there is a profit incentive, even in the current structure of Hearts, to bring in more people, which is likely going to convert to monetary uh, uh, profit for Blizzard, even without creating new content. But if they are seeing an audience that is bigger than before, if they're seeing an audience that is newly discovering Heroes of the Storm as one of the bigger MOBAs alongside Dota 2 and League of Legends, and Heroes of the Storm being uniquely positioned as the MOBA that doesn't take itself as seriously as the other two, it's not as toxic as League. It is, has beautiful graphics, beautiful audio, 
Um, it is not as complex as Dota 2. It is accessible with all the known Blizzard characters that you know and love, all these, these heroes that have rich backstories in short games of, you know, 12 to 20 minutes where uh, it doesn't feel too bad to lose. I think HOT's strength is it's one of the best games to lose in in terms of, uh, you know, emotional punishment. It can feel pretty punishing in Dota 2. Dota 2 winning feels very good as well, uh, but uh, it doesn't feel that bad to lose a game in HOTS usually. It doesn't take too long, you still get to play your character, characters have cool audio and visual design, you're having fun with your hero, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I think uh, the door is open for balanced patch changes. I think the door is open for, and this is a, this is a really <laughs> distant hope. What if they make one new hero per year? Just one per year, because the roster is pretty good already. If they just do one new hero per year, that would be amazing marketing for the game already. You could add a couple of cool heroes, preferably not from Overwatch, and it could reinvigorate the player base. You could get more players and it could turn a profit. It's not always about the biggest, most profitable game. You can have extra profit streams. I think it makes sense for Microsoft and Blizzard. It would be really, really cool. Which hero should it be? Let me know in the comments. This is also partially engagement bait. Being honest here, let me know in the comment which hero you would like to see. But I'm also curious and I do actually read all of my comments on my YouTube videos. So I will get to have these two eyes on it. Grub, ET. So uh, let's take a look at today's patch notes. Let's jump into it. Camera follow release release timer increased from 6 to 12 seconds for the game camera you can now pan the camera further away from your hero with camera lock enabled before it will prevent further panning floating text display for last hits updated to golden display fixed an issue that allowed the active ability hotkeys button to be dragged in the hotkey menu holding down shift or control will now also register as having the announcement modifier held for clicking on the top bar ah not just alt. What an interesting niche change. So if you hold shift left click and you click something on the top bar, it will say like Alarak is missing. Base experience value of experience globes has been increased from 80 to 160. So you'll level up faster in ARAM, twice as fast. ARAM is essentially becoming more turbo like. Experience value of melee minions reduced. Hey? Oh, okay. Huh? No minion XP anymore. No read more. Uh, what are experience globes? Aren't experience globes the little balls that are there after creeps die? Kill based XP. XP globes are the new XP balls, right? They pop out when no one lasts it, yeah. So... What I think this means... What I think this means... Is... Before, a melee creep gave 84 XP via the ball or via the last hit. And now, it will give 160, which is almost double. Ah, you know what? I think, isn't it true that in normal Heroes of the Storm, if you last hit specifically on a creep, no ball comes out. But if it dies passively, a ball that you have to pick up. So you have to be near if you don't specifically last hit it. If as Asmodan, you throw a fiery ball from really far away, uh and you specifically last hit things in a normal game of HOTS, you get the full wave of XP. But now, no last hit XP is given in ARAM. You have to be in the wave. You are getting more XP as well. Almost double from LA. More than double from Wizard, more than double from Ranged. Yeah, so it incentivizes fighting. So this makes like a full Azmodan Zagara uh chromie team unable to nuke the way from afar and get xp 
It's really punishing if no one is there. Yeah. And it gives uh, double XP. So it's more turbo-like in that uh, scaling is faster. Can I say I always dislike the ball XP thing? Yeah, you can say that. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively recent change to Heroes of the Storm to have those XP globes. And they actually promote less laning and more rotation. And laning is, of course, a big underpinning to League of Legends and Dota 2. And was part of HOTS 2. And now it's even less part of HOTS. So it's like even more HOTS pushed into the... Uh, you can just nuke the wave or you can show up really late to, to a wave that died and still get some XP. Sorry then, I will not say anything. I just said it's okay for you to say it. <laughs> Why would you not say anything? It's fine. Um, Observer, experience globes will now be displayed as blue for the team on the left and gray for the team on the right. Okay. The interface has been updated to display Misha, Olaf, Baylock and Eric's health bars as well. This is so interesting. This must have been on the list before. Whichever team or or staff is working on HOTS now, they must have had a list of changes that were already prepped for future work, right? There's no way that one person or the team of two, three, four, or five, whoever are working on it now, whether it's in Blizzard or outsourced, that they're just starting to say, um, I found myself playing TLV. And I really feel like the health bar should show up. So I made some changes to improve it. There's no way that comes out of nowhere, right? I think they had a list. Oh, another dude said? I can't... Okay. Yeah. I, I think they had a list and they're working on it. And this is such an interesting niche change. You wouldn't be improving the underpinnings of HOTS like this unless you're looking to show it to a new audience. I have to believe that. Interesting. Fixed an issue that caused Diva's health bar in the interface to only display the pilot's health. Combat healing recap will no longer register mana or shields restored to allied heroes as healing. I feel like it should though. I feel like it should though. Anyway. Clutch healer will now only register healing done to health. Protector. It's just MVP award. Clutch healer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter. Both of these don't super matter. Protector will now register damage prevented by protected as protection. Maps. Fix the issue that caused Knolls to reduce the armor of evading targets. Right. Yeah, I thought that I thought they're the the fire that Knolls did and that Hellbats do. I thought it was a spell. That's why it would still reduce the armor of an Illidan with evasion. I thought it was like a spell, but it's supposed to be an AoE physical attack, therefore not work. Illidan buff! You're welcome. Fixed an issue that caused Hellbass to reduce the armor. Yeah, they're the same unit, different skin. Hanamura Temple, please never bring this map back, I hit this map. Fixed an issue that caused the recon camp to have the scaling value reset when captured. Oh. Huh. Fixed an issue that caused Hellbass to reduce... Yeah, same thing, same thing. Next. Heroes. Abathur. Fixed an issue that caused Envenomed Nest Armor reduction to not be removed by Stasis or Invul. Adrenal Overload used to not apply to channel basic attacks. Channeled basic attacks. Oh, so you didn't get attack speed on uh, on Tychus? Didn't take it from 4 to 5 attack speed? Fixed an issue that caused Bombard Strain Locust to not deal bon- I knew about this bug! To not deal bonus damage to enemy structures. Chuck Beardo in chat says, The way software development works, they would have a probably very large backlog of feature fixes and changes like this. A developer or a group of developers would be assigned to tackle items in that backlog for a sprint, a period of development time, usually two weeks. This may be carefully managed, or they may just have a developer pick and choose things by themselves. Looks like someone who specializes in UI things had a sprint or two to work in the HOTS backlog. Yep. I think that's consistent with uh, what I described and expected as well i think it makes sense can't imagine blizzard to run agile agile development is like this like a sprint i think they can run agile remember uh, blizzard also had um, many different like blizzard also has king right the mobile the mobile game company there might be like lots of modernizations that we don't know about 
Fix an issue that caused monstrosity to gain more than intended damage from minion kills. Toxic Nest will no longer reveal attackers to Abathur during the arming phase. Locust damage will no longer display as a critic. Oh, th this is nice. So the Toxic Nest has a small wind-up phase. If you if it gets killed instantly because it's in vision, they were still shown to Abba and now no more. Huh. Locust damage will no longer display as a critical against structures. The damage bonus remains unaltered. Yeah, I remember seeing the crit kickers. It, feel, it, feel, it feels kind of good to see crit, but it was just their base damage, so they're not going to show that anymore. Stab no longer reveals the area around the target. It will now only reveal the target itself for two seconds. Spike burst will now reveal the affected area for 0.75 seconds. Bombard strain icon updated. Alarak, difficulty updated from hard to very hard. I agree with that. Fixed an issue that caused basic attacks to activate Blade of the High Lord while blinded or if the target is evading. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Blade of the High Lord is bonus damage from sadism on physical attacks. Lightning Surge now reveals the primary target for two seconds. Deadly Charge will now reveal targets. I haven't read these notes yet, but Kazmadan my wifey told me that so many heroes now have a reveal of two seconds on various abilities meaning you know the valiras the zeratuls the uh, novas can now be found by a wide roster of different hero abilities whereas before let's say if you're like a lily i don't know if lily got one i'm actually curious about lily now yeah she still counts <laughs> screw you uh before certain heroes so many heroes could not find a nova on a capture point that's standing still like on dragonshire or on volskaya foundry and you would like rely on another hero so all kinds of skill shots will now show cloaked targets for a bit if hots makes a full comeback will you start streaming it more yeah why not pirate to bodisu i still like playing it there were just no changes for so long right so i just revisit it sometimes for fun and nostalgia but no no new heroes no new heroes no pa no uh, patches and no reworks fixed an issue that caused cleansing flame to grant alexstrasza healing equal to the bonus health provided by dragon queen if dragon queen is active when activated so it was op then That's really OP. Oh, so it was just doing a lot more. That's why it felt so OP. E build with Dragon Queen. E build with Dragon Queen was giving insane healing. So it's like as if. So Dragon Queen gives you like a flat health bonus once, but it was adding it every time she did a cleansing flame. Fixed an issue that caused abundance to display the healing preview after the heal was activated, preservation to display the healing preview after the heal was activated, pacify and life unbound to activate their on heal from Dragon Queen's basic attack while she's blinded, which is of course not allowed. Dragon Queen basic attack was not healing in vulnerable allies when they were in Alexstrasza's space. Ah, that makes sense, because it's an attack. Attacks normally are ignored by invulnerable, but heals can go through invul normally. Fixed an issue that caused Cleansing Flames cooldown to not be displayed on the Talents tab of the scoreboard while Dragon Queen is active. Huh. Ancient Flame icon updated. Ana is now very hard. Agree. Basic attacks... Um, fixed an issue that caused basic attacks to grant stacks of dynamic optics while blinded. Looks like there were a lot of things happening when blinded that shouldn't be happening. Interesting. Blind was not working properly. 90% of changes is fixes difficulty to difficulty plus one. AoE spells now reveal target icon update. Yeah, it seems like that. Like, how many of these uh, kind of changes will I be reading and how much wiser will we get from it? Surprise for ya no longer reveals targets. Surprise for ya will now only bounce to visible targets. This is the 50% damage uh, bounce, right? Grievous Throw now reveals. Twin Cleave reveals. Guillotine. Wow. Zeratul now very hard. Cleave will now reveal 
effect area. Feel the hit icon update. Is this patch live or will this be on the PTR later? This is live. Heroes of the Storm has just been updated with a patch. Diablo updated from medium to hard. I'm not sure if I agree with that one. Check Samuro. Okay. Let's see. Samuro. Difficulty increased to very hard. Windwalk healing increased. Okay. Samuro had a bug fix that prevented him from that prevents him from swapping. Fixed an issue that allows Samuro. This is from uh, September. Allowed Samuro to activate image transmission on the mirror image directly after his hearthstone activates. This was a little trick. You did B shift uh, shift D. B shift D. And then you could hearthstone and immediately swap back to an illusion in lane. Only when you use shift. And that was uh, giving them a lot of healing sustain. And then in the next batch from October, I believe they did a balance. Yeah, this is... Technically, this is the first balance update since March 29th, October 23rd. So literally one and a half years, but there was only one change and it was increased windwalk healing from 1% per second to 3% per second and decreased the way of the wind healing from 5% on cast to 4% on cast. And now we see that these made it into the life patch. Also fixed an issue that caused Way of the Wind to increase Samuro's healing score instead instead of his self healing score, which is only a reporting analytic uh, analytic for the screen, for the post uh, you know the post game screen. Mirror image reveal of nearby units on death now matches other heroic units. And they because they took away the sustain from the exploit, they added extra to the wind walk with this one. Are Diablo, Nubrak, and Artanis hard, really? I mean, Artanis is not really hard, I would say. He's bad. He's hard to escape with. But he's not hard. You have to, like, hit things to get your shield back. It's kind of self-explanatory. I guess, like, the QE swap being relevant with that is a bit harder. Diablo has some combo stuff. You need to hit people into the wall. You could miss, you know... The average bronze Diablo does a charge into a Tychus into an open space and then wonder why he's dying, no escape. Using Q on a creep to escape is not that hard. Uh, yeah. So what are what are some more of the big uh, cool changes? I mean, I could go them one by one, but it's very verbose, isn't it? For what's mostly bug fixes. Difficulty Chen, hard to medium. It's an interesting change as well. I feel like Chen is harder than Diablo and Anubarak. Check Alarak. Okay. Yeah, I checked Alarak already. Asmodan fixed an issue that caused all shall burn to detonate twice if Sadia's kiss is selected while active. Oh. There must be some Asmodan mains in the world that were quiet about this, you know, using such things. They showed a new hero at the end of the patch notes. Yeah, sure. Search two seconds. <laughs> 68. 68 times. Garrosh Decimate will reveal Heaven's Fury will no longer cause allies to be incapable of collecting experience globes while inside a shrub for two seconds. Wow. Impaling Blades from Kerrigan now reveals. Primal Grasp, Psionic Shift. Malganus's Fell Claws. If Blind as a Bat is not active, they thought of that. Just like the Dreadlord says in Warcraft 3. You thought of that? Stormbolt will no reveal the target. Will no reveal. <laughs> when you hit someone with Stormbolt, storm they'll be cloaked. Octograp will now reveal the target when first cast. Triple tap will now reveal targets. Wildfire Bear reveals. Oh. So any Burning Rage reveals? Or just Wildfire Bear? Yeah. 
literally anytime you stand next to cloakies with fire they just uh, get revealed divine storm doesn't divine storm always reveal already actually got some budget from warcraft rumble to spill into hearts i wonder how much rumble is making Ooh, i thought hots was abandoned by blizzard for the most part yeah and that's why this today's patch yesterday's patch was so interesting because you wonder what does it mean brightwing difficulty updated from hard to easy yeah she's the only automatic healer fixed an issue that caused phase shift to heal the target briefly after arrival instead of on arrival oh kasmadan complained to me a lot about this one like the phase shift completes which is supposed to give a healing but then the target instantly dies without the heal because there was a small lag between the two they finally fixed this also fixed an issue that caused blink heal to heal vehicles when cast on them oh so you could heal the protector or dragon knight invisible friends will now preview the total healing that will be provided unstable anomaly oh that's nice because invisible friends does uh, a burst heal a small burst heal and then healing over time as they remain cloaked so now it actually will summarize for you how much in total will be given that's nice that's a nice ui update you know what i hope for one new hero per year improved reconnect system improved replay system the ability to open loot chests while queuing up the ability to buy cosmetics and use them while queuing up or inside a game already without having to cancel queue first that would be nice wouldn't it we get all those we get on steam hots is back on the menu in full swing okay stop sir that's going too far no it's not far enough cool well i'm getting excited to play i will link the full notes in chat and I'll link the full notes in the video on YouTube. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, see you next time.